Welcome to another tutorial video. This time we're going to be going back to software as a service, venture capital, and startups and discussing the annual or annualized recurring revenue metric, otherwise known as ARR. So in a video published last year, we covered some of the key SaaS metrics, things like the LTV to CAC ratio and the payback period. But I wanted to make this one a little bit more focused and go into more detail on one specific metric, namely the annual or annualized recurring revenue. Now for all the files and resources here, you'll want to go to bringintowallstreet.com slash KB slash venture capital slash annual dash recurring dash revenue dash ARR. I will also pin the link below this video because I know it's really long. You can also just Google this and our name and find it like that. This is another excerpt from our new venture capital and growth equity course. We go into more detail there, but I want to give you a preview and some of the key points here. So in this lesson, we're going to cover four main topics. First, I'm going to describe briefly what annual recurring revenue actually is and show you a quick example. Then we'll go into the calculations. I'll show you another example and some of the subtleties that go into it with real companies. Then I'll give you an example of how for a smaller company or a startup with customer level information, you can go from the customer revenue information to the annual or annualized recurring revenue. Then in part four, we'll discuss what ARR actually means in real life and whether it is the most important SaaS metric or whether people overrate its importance. So what is annual recurring revenue? The recurring part and the annual part are the two main differences if we compare this to just normal revenue. So with the recurring part, it means that we have to exclude non-recurring revenue sources like installation fees, consulting, professional services, or one-time license fees. We do this because investors tend to value recurring revenue at higher multiples because it is more predictable and it gives companies more visibility into how they might perform in the future. Now, the annual or annualized part means that you need to annualize the company's revenue based on its results from the last month or the last quarter, the most recent month or the most recent quarter. This is especially important if the company uses monthly or quarterly invoices, as you know from our coverage of SaaS accounting. You do this because you want to see how well the company would do over the entire year based on its results from a fairly recent period. Let's go into Excel and look at a quick example. I brought up this company, Everbridge, a software as a service company. You can see they have revenue from subscriptions, professional services, and perpetual licenses. So we want just the subscriptions here. This will give us our quarterly recurring revenue. We can take this and look at the total revenue and see what percent the recurring sources comprise. And then to get the annualized recurring revenue based on these quarterly numbers, we just take the quarterly recurring revenue and then multiply by the quarters in the year four. And we get to that. And we can copy this across. We have this through Q2 of 2023. And then we can also look at the revenue growth rate and compare it to the annualized recurring revenue growth rate. So let's take the ARR now and take the Q1 of 22 number and then divide by Q1 of 2021. And we have this, and we can see how we do get some slightly different results here, even though broadly speaking, the revenue growth and the ARR growth are in line with each other. This whole process is useful for budgeting and planning, especially for high growth startups that are burning cash. When you're valuing companies, ARR is also a useful metric that lets you benchmark one company against its peers more easily. So for example, you can see if one company's growth is mostly due to non-recurring sources like consulting or professional services. You can see if its growth is lower when you limit the revenue to just the recurring sources and make it comparable to other companies that do all or mostly recurring revenue. So that's the basic definition. Calculating ARR for a large public company is not too complicated. I showed you the process before. You look at the company's revenue from its most recent period and you remove all the non-recurring revenue from consulting services and perpetual licenses. Then you have to multiply by four or 12 or another appropriate number to annualize this figure. Let's look at another example now for Averpoint, which is another software as a service company. And I'll show you how it is a little bit different from what I just showed you for Everbridge. So here are the numbers for Averpoint. And one difference is that they have more categories of revenue here. Now, one subtlety that I think is important is that obviously subscriptions are going to be part of the recurring revenue, but we don't know about termed licenses and support and maintenance because maintenance is recurring in some sense because it is something that customers of the perpetual licenses purchase and they can keep renewing it year after year. But some people would say that it's not quite as recurring as pure subscriptions. And then term licenses and support, similarly, it's a little bit ambiguous because 
Yes, in a sense, they are subscriptions, but if they have a fixed term, they're not exactly the same as a subscription that always renews itself over time. If we go to Avapoint's filing, their 10K, we can see that they define annual recurring revenue as SaaS or subscription revenue, term license and support, and maintenance revenue sources. So they seem to be counting all these toward annual recurring revenue. And so we can do the same thing here. Let's just sum up these three at the top. We can look at this as a percent of the total, and then we can annualize it by taking this number and then multiplying by the four quarters in a year. And then once again, once we have this, we can look at the revenue growth rates and the ARR growth rates and see how they're different and how they might be similar as well. So let's take the quarterly revenue, divide by the quarterly revenue from the same period the year before. And then for the ARR, let's take the ARR from Q1 of 2022 and divide by the same number from Q1 of 2021. And then copy this across and we can see that once again, broadly speaking, they follow the same trend, although there are some slight differences here. So that's a little bit about the calculations. Let's now go into the customer level analysis. So one thing that often comes up with ARR is that you're not really working with large public companies, but rather with startups or small businesses. Now, the easy part here is to exclude the non-recurring sources. It should be fairly obvious what is a consulting fee or a license versus what is an actual subscription or a maintenance agreement or a support agreement with a customer who has already purchased something. Typically, what you do here is you start with the recurring revenue from a previous period, and then you add revenue from new customers. You add expansion ARR in the form of upsells and price increases from existing customers. Then you subtract downgrades from existing customers, and then you subtract cancellations or churn. And then at the end, you get to your number for the period. Now, if this is some type of monthly or quarterly number, you can multiply it by four or 12 to annualize it. But if you're already working with annual numbers, then you don't need to do this. You're already effectively getting the annual or annualized number. So I have an example here for this fictional company, Procyon, this enterprise software company based in Europe. And you can see how the build here works. We start with the beginning annual recurring revenue. We add revenue from new customers. We add the upsells and price increases, net of downgrades, and then we subtract the churn or cancellations. Now, if you look at some of the Excel formulas here, you can see that there are a bunch of some ifs formulas that look a little bit complicated on the surface, but if you break them down, they're not too difficult. If you go over to the customers tab, you can see the subscription revenue by customer by year right here. And so to get something like the ARR from new customers, for example, I'll just delete this one for now. And then let's go over and we want to go to column G right here. So this is the range that we'll be summing over because we want the revenue for fiscal 2022 right here. So I'm gonna select everything in this range. And then for the criteria range, we also want the same area because we are still dealing with fiscal 2022. And we want to sum up all customers here that have greater than zero revenue. So in other words, positive revenue for fiscal 2022. And then we also want customers that did not exist in fiscal 2021. So for the criteria range two, we can take everything in this column, column F, and then for the criteria, we can just enter double quotes here to indicate that we want customers that had a blank entry, meaning they had no revenue for that year. And we have a slight issue with the units here. We need to divide by a thousand, so I'll do that. And now we get to the new customer ARR right there. For the upsells and price increases, it's pretty similar, except here we're taking customers that existed in both periods with positive revenue and then subtracting ones that also existed in the previous year. So customers that existed in both fiscal 2021 and 20, 2022, we basically take their revenue and just take the difference to get this. And we're netting out the downgrades by doing this because we're not counting them separately, although we could. And then for the churn, it's basically the opposite of the new customer formula, where here we are looking at the customers who existed in 2021, but who became blank because they canceled in 2022. And that's the basic idea. You can set up a whole projection based on this, but that's the overall idea. Now here, we automatically get the annual recurring revenue or ARR because we don't have quarterly or monthly information. So there is no way to annualize this and get a more accurate picture of how the company is actually doing. Let's go to part four now and talk about how to interpret ARR. Some people will turn ARR into a valuation multiple. It could be enterprise value over ARR or just TEV over ARR. For a good example of this, Bessemer, this well-known venture capital firm, has this emerging cloud index, and they track it versus the S&P and NASDAQ. If you go to companies right here, you can see that they have a listing of companies, and they actually annualize each company's revenue. It's not clear if this is the 
recurring revenue or if they're just taking the most recent quarter and multiplying by four to annualize it, but they're doing something like this. And yes, they actually turn it into a valuation multiple. If the companies in your set have high percentages of non-recurring revenue or one company has 50%, but then other companies have more like 10 or 20%, this can be very useful for normalizing the companies in your set. It's also useful for benchmarking to see which company is growing because of increased subscriptions versus other companies that might be growing because they happen to have one-off consulting engagements or license sales or something like that. And for startups, it's also important because it's useful for budgeting purposes. For example, if a company has grown very quickly recently, its ARR might be a lot higher than its actual revenue over the past 12 months, which means that maybe it needs to hire more support reps, maybe it needs to hire more sales reps to keep supporting that growth going forward. Now, the truth is that in many real life cases for large companies, I don't think ARR actually adds all that much over normal revenue. And for a good example of this, if you go back to the ARR numbers here for Everbridge and Avapoint, yes, there are some differences and we get slightly different growth rates. Some of these companies look better on an ARR basis. Some look better on a total revenue basis, but these percentages are not really that much different. And so, yes, the growth rates differ slightly, but it's not really enough to change our view of either company in this case. I would say that ARR is actually most useful if the company has a whole lot more in non-recurring revenue or its growth rate has changed a lot in the past month or quarter because it's a high growth startup, for example. In those cases, ARR is quite useful, but for large companies like this growing at 10, 15, 20% per year, it is not necessarily that big a deal, even though people who are very much into the SaaS sector will try to tell you that it is the one metric to rule them all. So that's about it for this lesson. Let's do a quick recap and summary. What is annual recurring revenue? Well, you take the company's total revenue and then you exclude the non-recurring sources such as professional services and perpetual licenses. Then if it's for a quarter or month, you annualize it by multiplying by four or 12, depending on the period. To calculate ARR, you do what I just did for the public companies here. If you have customer level information, such as the revenue that each customer has for each year, you can use some if or some ifs functions in Excel to do this and to create kind of a build here from the beginning annual recurring revenue to the ending annual recurring revenue. Then what does ARR mean in real life? It can be useful as a valuation multiple, but it's mostly useful for normalizing companies that might have different percentages of recurring and non-recurring revenue. And it's mostly useful in the context of startups that are growing quickly and need to budget and plan ahead and need to figure out their hiring needs. It can be very useful in that case because they can see about how much they might need going forward, assuming that their recent performance continues. That's it for this lesson. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about annualized recurring revenue and how it applies to startups and software companies.